Hello my friends, this is your friend Alex the Super Nintendo Gamer. Welcome back to my channel and this week's episode of the Alex Game Show. Today, my friends, I'm going to do my review on Paper Mario the Thousand Year Door. And when you see behind us, I got the um, game one, but I won't be doing game gameplay. It's just the tile screen and the story cut thing just playing through. Just to make it, just to keep the curve, the kind of shit we're talking about today. Uh, okay, well, first I'm going to tell you, this game is a really cool, awesome game. If you're a fan of Mario or RPGs, this is the game for you. And I haven't played out through this whole game yet, but I have played the original on the Nintendo GameCube back in 2005. Back in I didn't get my copy until 2005. It came out in 2004, but I didn't get my copy until 2005. So I know how this game always plays out, so I feel like I can tell you how this game is. But I am not going to tell any spoilers, because in case you, some of you haven't played the game, I'm not going to tell like who the final boss is or, or like any big little story details, just a little, just a little story details, just kind of the basic, but not a whole lot that would spoil it. First off, this game is a really cool epic game, and this one, the original version I think came out in 2004, and it was in, I think, November in North America, and of course we know the remake version from Ten Switch came out in 2024, 20 years later, on May 23rd, and... Also, this game is really epic. This is kind of a unique Mario game because the characters and the story and everything is quite different from some of the other Mario games that you have played. Because right here we see on the front cover, we see some like unique characters. Like you see like the Three Shadows, the x knots And of course we know like, like characters like Goombella and Koopas are kind of like traditional like to the Mario universe because it's like the Goombas and Koopas. But you have like Man Flurry which is a little bit different. What's is really good about this game? When you first start in the game, it starts out kind of like uh, Mario gets the gets this, the magical map from Princess Peach. She wants him to come to Rogueport to help him help her find the hidden treasure that's been hidden in that town for a thousand years. And when Mario gets there, he is jumped by he meets Goombella and is jumped by the X Knots, who wants the magical map and those crystal stars. Of course, Mario teams up with Goombella and Professor Franklin. And they find the thousand door, and out through the game, Mar out through the game, Mario tries to get all all the crystal stars to stop the X knots. Because you kind of know that part, because it's kind of the basics after you play the first chapter. That's what the X knots are after. I also thought that it's kind of funny when they got those big googly eyeballs, like th they got like eyeballs like this, and they have they have like those shirts that pop over and they pop like this. I don't know why the X knots do that. No one looks like no, what they look like. They almost kind of like the shy guys, almost. Oh, sweet one, no, no. Also, to the gameplay is awful is awfully good because when you battle, you get like star points, and you probably know because that was in the first pick Mario Nintendo 64, and that was on the GameCube version of the Falcon Door, and then now on the remake, then you had star points come back. I don't know why they quit having Mario get level ups. They kind of quit doing the after Super Paper Mario. Their Paper Mario is still good, like Stick Star, Color Splash, and the Omegami King. But I wish they kind of bring the level up systems back. Or at least bring like in some type of new way that would make it kind of fresh and new. And what's really cool about this game, every chapter you get to, every chapter is its own theme. And you meet new characters. And there's always something like new, some new challenge. Like as in the game, like Mario maybe fight a dragon. Or sign up in a, for a fight tournament to win like a crystal star. There's a lot of different things out for the game. Or you take a crane. And that's all I'm going to say on that. But there's a lot of different things that you do in this game. And you meet some also characters are both kind of humorous, smart alecky, and also kind of charming. And there's a whole bunch of different characters that you meet out through the game. Like there's that, like Goombella, she's kind of a little sassy type, but she works with Mario. And who else? you meet a whole bunch of new different characters. And there's also there's challenging bosses. And there's one thing I like to give a tip on the game. If you... You always want to do a lot of battles by battling enemies because you get a lot of level ups. You may figure out why you get kind of battle enemies, it gets kind of boring. But t believe me, I did that back. I used to skip on battles back. But when you get to a certain part of the game and it, when you're really kind of messed up in because then you're in a situation, it's hard to go back. Because that's in some parts of the game. There's parts that you won't be able to go back and get level ups. So it's best to always keep battling enemies and get more level ups. Like... Like at the first level, do like HP, and then do FP, and then do BP to get Mario stronger. Now for the game, 
I did that technique. I've been doing this technique on this version on the on Nintendo Switch remake of Paper on the Thousand Door. Hold on, I gotta slow down and get off the side one though. You find out what level up your HP, FP, and BPs out through the whole games, just straight through. Really helps. I recommend this technique for all you gamers out there, because this really helps. Back I used to just do HP all the time when I was on the GameCube version. But I found out if you don't level up like his Mario's FPs and his BPs, and he's not as strong. His real strength lies in his BPs. And I have been doing on my original copy of Paint Mario the Thousand the Door. I've been just, just leveling up BPs out through the whole game. Getting his badge points all boosted up. And that makes Mario just by strong. You don't level his HPs and FPs. Also his hot points and flower points. So, but you can level up anything you want in the game. But I recommend if you just start now, do HP and then do FP and do BP next. That's the best way to get Mario stronger out for the game and always keep hunting for new badges. And also, too, this game is a really cool game, and what's really nice about this game, every time you clear a chapter, then you do, you get to play as, like, as Peach, and then you get to play as Bowser. And, of course, Bowser's always got some type of comical thing. He's always screaming at his minions, always telling them they're stupid and stuff. Bowser's kind of a hothead. And also, too, there's a lot of cool things. Every time you get a crystal star, you get a new special loop, so you're able to do different attacks, or maybe boost Mario's and his friends, power, power, power them up during battle, or get, or restore your HPs and FPs during battle. Really cool. And you have to check out, I'm not going to tell you all the bill is, but I'm going to tell you the first two. The first one's called, I think it's called Sweet Treat. It allows you to get extra HPs and F, it restores your HPs and FPs during the battle, but you have to, like, shoot crystal stars down at the character's icon faces. So to get the HPs and FPs build back up. And then the second move is, I think it's called Of Tremble, I think it's called. I can't remember what its name is because I have a little trouble with it, but I remember it's the first crystal star, it allows you to like an earthquake technique, and you have to press like the A button each time to get its power boost up. It's a really cool move. The original version, it, um, the meter went really fast, so it was hard to get lined up good, and if you messed up, that was it. This version it goes a little slow and it's easier to get it built up so you can do more damage. So it's a really cool technique. This game's also been really fun. It's been my childhood game. And when I was but when I was a teenager, but when they made the 3DS, I wanted them. They was making like a bunch of remakes for the 3DS, and I always wanted them to remake. There's actually two games on the one. Like I wanted to remake Super Mario RPG: Legend of the Seven Stars, and of course, Paper Mario: The Thousand Year Door. And I, now they remade those two games, and if you've been watching my Super Mario RPG boss battles, check them out. And I was awful, oh, <coughs> excuse me, I get awful side of, I get talking a little fast, I gotta slow down just a little bit. Whew, okay, I'm getting awful side of. If you were, I always wanted to remake the Fowls in the door, and seeing this get remade, was getting this game remade was really a blessing. I was really wanting them to remake this game. Oh, excuse me. Screen's going off too. I always wanted them to remake this game. I I think it was about in 2000. I think it was about in the like the last decade, about halfway through the first last decade. I wanted them to remake this game because I said this game is a classic. They should remake this game. And I think they would make it for the 3DS and they'd call it Paper Mario the Thousand Year Door 3D because pretty much every 3DS remake was called had the word free, had the game's title and the word 3D at the end like The Legend of Zelda Oster in the Time 3D and Star Fox 64 3D. There was a lot of games that had that used the word 3D for at the end. I don't know why. But now they remade it for Nintendo Switch, and it's just called Paper Mario The Files in the Door. Sometimes I like nickname it, call it Paper Mario The Files in the Door Remastered. But it's just really just called Paper Mario The Files in the Door. So this is a really cool game, and I'm really glad I got to talk to you today, my friends, because sharing this childhood game with you guys is really a blessing, and I was really glad to talk to you today, my friends. And with about way to wrap up this video, and before we do, I want to ask you guys a question. Which version of Paper Mario the Thousand Year Door do you like? Do you like the original Nintendo GameCube or the new one on Nintendo Switch? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Okay, that pretty much wraps up for this day's video. Thank you guys for tuning in and watching. If you like this type of content, subscribe to the channel. Please give a like, a share, and a comment. And click the bell to get notifications to get more fun content from Alex the Super Nintendo Gamer. Thank you guys for watching. Have a great day and God bless you my friends. Bye bye!